Good morning, guys, and welcome to IM8 to 12 course, Computer Application in Mechanical and Industrial Engineering. So, in this course, we will go over three main learning outcomes. The first one is to use MATLAB in writing computer programs. It is to solve the optimization prob problems using Lingo and Excel. And finally, to do some statistical analysis using Excel. So the first part, the first part of this course is basically to write computer programs using MATLAB. So what is MATLAB? Basically, MATLAB is a mathematical software that could be used as an advanced calculator or graphing tool, and it could be used as a powerful programming language to solve all your engineering problems. Now, MATLAB is basically the abbreviation of Matrix Laboratory, which means MATLAB software is based on matrices. So in order to understand the basics of MATLAB, we should first make a small review on all the matrices types, their operations, and how they are used inside this mathematical software called MATLAB. So let's start by some review on matrices. Basically, guys, in this lecture, we'll go over the matrix definition and their types. And then in the next lecture, we will go over the matrix operations. And then after that, we will go over how to use the matrix operations inside MATLAB. So I'll start first by the matrix definition. So what is a matrix? Basically, as we know, the matrix is a collection of numbers arranged in a rectangular manner. Rectangular means that the, uh, the size of this matrix is a rectangle, which means the number of rows could be different than the number of columns. So guys, basically, I can define a matrix by saying that the matrix is a collection of numbers arranged in some rows and some columns. The size of a matrix is always defined first by the number of rows and then by the number of columns. So I should always start the size of the matrix by the number of rows and put this on your mind. So guys, you should always start the size of matrix by the number of rows and then the number of columns. And this is also applicable for the element indices. So the first index is always the row number and then the second index is always the column number. We'll go over it later. So guys, a matrix A is defined by its size. The size is M by N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. So this is a matrix, basically. It is a collection of some elements, and these elements are numbers. So guys, if I take the first element here, so what is this element? It is A11. The first one means that this element is located at the first row, at row number one. Now, the second one means that this element is located at the first column, column number one. Now, if I take this element here, A, one, two. One means it is located at the first row. Two means it is located at the second column. Now, what is A1N here? A1N means I'm staying in the first row, but N is the last column. So, this element here is located at the last column, but it is at the first row. Now, what is A21? A21 is different than A12. A21 means I am at the second row, at the first column. Now, what is a M N A M N basically is the last element of this matrix. It is located at the last row M and at the last column N. The general form of the element of any matrix is A I J. So what is A I J? 
This means that this element is located at a row I and a column J. So guys, this is basically the general form of a matrix. If I want to take a numerical example, I will take this one, this example. Now guys, first of all, the matrix is defined first by its size and then by the, num by the elements located in this matrix. What is the size of this matrix? As I said before, you should start by the row or by the number of rows and then by the number of columns. So as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four rows and I have one, two, three, four, five columns. So I have four rows and five columns. So this matrix A is A four times five. Okay. If I want to ask you guys, to find the element A11. So what is the element A11? A11 is the element located at the first row and at the first column, which is here, 33.87. Now, what is the element A21? A21 here is located at the second row and at the first column. Now, what is A21? Four three. A four three means that the element is located at row four and at column three, which is here three point fourteen. A four five is the last element of the matrix because basically this matrix has a size of four times five, so it is fifty one point five. Now, guys. If I ask you to find the element A54, you can't find it because I don't have five rows. I only have four rows. So I cannot know what is A54. A54 doesn't belong to this matrix because I don't have a fifth row. Now, what if I ask you to find A01? So what is A01? Basically, guys, I cannot have an index of zero. There is no index of zero. The indices M and N or I and J, they are always greater or equal to one. So I don't, I never have an index equal to zero. I also never have an index minus one or a negative index. So the index is always greater or equal to one or it is strictly equal, uh, greater than zero, okay? So guys, the index i or j cannot be less than one, all right? So this is for the definition of matrices. I'm sure guys that you know a lot of matrices and that, that you went over them. Now, if I wanna do some types of matrices, let's go over some particular cases or some types of matrices with their requirements and their examples.